Ah, oh, yes. Welcome back to part two of this beautiful still life. Here is where we're at, and here is where we're going. If you like this content and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. For now, let's jump in. It's painting time. Be ready. Grab a breath. Give me a hand. Let's start with the candlestick. It's important. It's the only light source. I'm using cad yellow, a little titanium white, and making the bottom darker and trying to make the top translucent. Well, as best as I can. As mentioned last time, this is hammered brass. I think. Stifle! Either way, gotta paint in them hammer marks and divots. And then a little highlight on the lip. A little work on the skirt of the kettle. Oh, Mrs. Potts! Ooh, it's a lady. Well, if the kettle is a lady, then it must mean the candlestick is a dude. Sup, bro? Oh, look at me, man! I'm super phallic, bro! Oh, man! As per a previous discussion in part one, this is a painting about light and shadow, not about stuff. That being the case, well, it's gotta have shadow. I feel like the Miss Lady Kettle would cast a shadow, but it wouldn't be black. It would be dark green on account of the background. Same with the mortar. And then I gotta darken up the BG and add some value to that green. There we go. Nice. That mortar is too bright. And I think I want to give it more depth and dimension. You guys, unless you want it to be flat, for some reason. Don't make it flat. That's a cardinal sin. Things looking flat. Unless you're going for that. To each their whatever. Let's zoom on in on this Miss Kettle and get them effects of light right. Now, the idea for this handle is to cast just a little bit of light as it extends out and away from the kettle. Hopefully, it will also add some depth. Reinforce that shadow. Now it's pestle time. I wasn't gonna add it at first, but then, yeah. I'll use it to break up the right side and also point towards the central focal point, which of course will be the flame of the candle. I want the tabletop to be more lustrous. It's kind of faded out, and that's not the look I'm going for. Guys, the rest of this is throwing in shadow, where I think it should go. Keep it in mind where the light from the candle would hit. The feature of this painting is the dance between light and shadow, where one retreats and the other advances. And the candle is flickering, so some places would get hit at a moment in time and others would be cloaked in shadow. This painting attempts to capture that movement. Hopefully I achieve it. Like I said, I'm not trying to make a pretty pretty painting. I'm trying to create a drama between what can be seen and what is concealed. Hopefully it works out. Hey, the comment section is always open. Let me know what you think. Well, I think that's enough for today. 
come on back next week and we'll finish up this beautiful still life. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'd sure appreciate it. As for me, I'm going to the house. For Studio 214, I'm Greg. Thanks for watching.